Eba. Bugger the boo. What you think about that? Were you scared? Guys, this is completely bizarre. Okay, to me. I. I. So. What I'm gonna read is called Next in Line. And it is by Matt the Writer 072. And I read his Sonic the Dark Hedgehog recently. Um, and it was so bizarre that I I felt that I had to check out the rest of the things. And I don't know whether this is common in fan fiction, because like so I'm here on the outside looking in, making fun and reading I am not participating and and this is very funny <laughs> like in a in an existential sort of way this I'm going to read this guy's profile again this is the okay author it starts this way author has written 20 stories for Harry Potter Sonic the Hedgehog Final Fantasy 1 through 6 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Super Monkey Ball and Jumanji dear visitors it is my great pleasure to welcome you to my humble profile and who am I well my name is Matthew which should be obvious given my username and I'm a 24 year old metalhead from Canada I love composing music and writing stories I've dabbled in a few fandoms of interest to me, Harry Potter, Sonic the Hedgehog, and Final Fantasy, but then I discovered the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fandom, and I feel right at home there. How bizarre. Roald Dahl was one of my favorite, my all-time favorite authors, and when I first read Charlie and the Chocolate Factory about 13 years ago, I was hooked. What do you mean hooked? It is a complete story from beginning to end. There's nothing to expand upon. I'm pretty sure that Cat CF, oh Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, okay, is all I'm gonna write from here now. Here, here from now on. Although I do have plans on finishing my novelization of Final Fantasy IV soon. Without a doubt, my favorite version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is the 2005 movie. But I also enjoy the 1971 film because of its classic charm, even though it differs significantly from the book. So does the 2005 movie. <laughs> They both differ significantly from the book. At least the 71 film, like, does it well? Listen, okay, I I liked the 2005 because there was a lot of absurdness in it, and I love absurdity. When they cut to, like, the tundra, and there was, a, there was like, an, an apartment building just sort of there, and an active dentist, I laughed for, like, five minutes. It was a really good joke, but... It doesn't stand up in terms of, like, a story to the 71 movie, for sure. Anyway, don't ask me about the musical since I haven't seen it yet. I thought that you were a fan. <laughs> Shippings aren't necessarily important to me, but if I was forced to have one, if we, it would definitely be Charlie Bucket and Veruca Salt, since they're polar opposites of each other, and in my opinion it makes things more interesting. If not then, then it would be Mike TV and Violet Beauregard. These are not characters. This is this is like the crux of of fan fiction to me is when people write stories about characters that are not characters. Like a name, several actions and a characteristic do not make a character. They just don't. They they make a talking head. I, I, I guess you could expand on them, but that, but by, by that point, you haven't written that character. You've written an expansion upon that character that drastically shifts the nature of the original character. Because remember, remember that a character in fiction is just a collaboration of scenes. It's not an actual living, breathing human person. It is a group of scenes that is meant to express a certain thing to an audience. And that audience is generally supposed to accept the thing that is acting in those scenes as a fully fleshed out character. That's the point. But it is a facade. It is verisimilitudinous, I believe is the word. It's long. It, what I'm getting at is that if you change something significantly enough that a non-character becomes a character, it's not even the original anymore. You know what I mean? And fan fiction does this frequently... And it's it's like it's like the the it's like the common currency of fan fiction is to do this, and 
I, I speak about this as though I hate it, but it's just fascinating. It's amazing to me. It's part of why I do this. I want to thank, and then just like a whole bunch, just a whole bunch of names for your support. Several of these names, one of them is John Hammond 1993, and then there's two different usernames that concern Veruca. Veruca Biatch and Veruca Salt Queen. That's really funny. And one of them is XX Candy Lover XX. Do people really like this that much? I am in the process of creating an account on Archive of Our Own, and I'll be using the same new username that I have here. I currently have 19 stories on my profile. And the one that I'm reading is a novel. It is over a novel. It is 63,039 words. I think it's, I think it's finished. I, I'm going to read chapter one. Yeah, I'm going to read chapter one. Um, it's called Next in Line. Forty years after the Bucket family moved into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, Charlie realizes that he cannot go on forever. He and Willy Wonka de decide to release not five. I thought, no, Willy Wonka would be dead. Don't even pretend. We release not five, but seven golden tickets in an attempt to find a new heir. But will the two chocolatiers manage to find a suitable candidate? Set after the 2005 movie and features all new ticket winners. We're getting original characters! We'll get to see what this guy does when he's creating characters. And considering his fandoms, I'm not going to expect a lot. <laughs> Disclaimer, I do not ba dooba. Chapter 1, A Dire Situation. Here's the author's note. Hello, everyone. I was supposed to start the story after finishing Roy and the Chocolate Factory. That's funny. That, <laughs> that's, it's kind of strange to just flatly say the words, that's funny. But it's that, it's that kind of funny where it's like funny that you can't laugh at. Roy and the Chocolate Factory. But I'll have to wait until I did until I have enough time to watch the whole movie uninterrupted in order to finish that one. Since I really don't want to keep you all waiting for weeks on end, I decided that it would be time for me to begin this one, and I can't wait to bring my ideas for the story to life. I wish I had the passion this guy had. I'll publish the next chapter of the Roy and the Gold Chocolate Factory soon. But after that, I'm taking a break so that I can focus on this story. Let's begin. There is a fact of life that is completely true and unavoidable. People get older with each passing second. This reads like Roald Dahl already. Does, is, does, is he just imitating the styles of the things that he is, like, writing fanfiction about? It's so weird. It's so weird, dude. Believe it or not, that even happens to CEOs who run major companies. The days, months, years, and decades add up, and before long, the person needs to hand over his or her business to someone else in order to keep it running he or she once he or she passes. Little did a certain chocolatier know that he would be in this position as well. That doesn't make any sense, because you just said that it is a fact of life that is completely true and unavoidable. What do you mean, little did he know? He knew perfectly well that he was going to age. Charlie Bucket was just 12 years old when he and his family moved into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. Of course, it wasn't any ordinary chocolate factory. It was by far the world's largest and most unique chocolate factory, being over 50 times as big as any other. See what I mean? It's got that rolled doll to it. It's This is bizarre. It's almost a work of art, like in that he can capture a voice like that, and also that he is grammatically good all the time. I still hate the, the descriptive pronoun stuff, but, like, you just gotta deal with that. I don't know why people do that. It sucks. Don't. Anyway. <laughs> it all started back in 2005, when Willy Wonka sent out five golden tickets hidden in five of his ordinary Wonka bars. The golden tickets were an invitation for Mr. Wonka to, to come to the factory for a tour, and the person who behaved the best would become the heir to his factory. A worldwide frenzy followed, and in the end, four of the tickets were found by horrible brats named Augustus Gloop, Veruca Salt, Violet Beauregard, and Mike TV. The last one was found by an unlikely winner, a kind-hearted, compassionate boy named Charlie Bucket, <laughs> whose family lived in extreme poverty during his childhood. Now, again, this is like an introduction to the story of the like the original story which makes no sense because 
if I wanted to get into Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, I would read the book or watch one of the movies first, or all of the above. What I would not do first is go and read fan fiction. That is never the way to begin something. <laughs> so why are you recapping? Everyone who's reading this already knows. On February 1st, 2005, the four brats, brats, and their parents, along with Charlie and his Grandpa Joe, showed up outside of the gates of the world-famous chocolate factory. Grandpa Joe is dead. During the tour, the four brats were eliminated from the factory until only Charlie remained and he became the heir of the Wonka Candy Company, the WCC. They do say that what goes around comes around, and Charlie, now 53 years old, was about to find out for himself what this phrase meant. No. He was eight in 2005. That's what you said. No, 12. Where did I see eight? Okay, that, that, that threw me for a huge loop, because I swear I thought I said eight. Twelve. Fifty-three. That's... Oh, God, I can't believe I'm doing math. I'm not doing it. No, I don't care, I'm not doing it. The year is 2045. Despite the fact that he was 82 years old, Willy Wonka was very much alive and well, and he and Charlie had been running the factory together. Had been, not have been. Running the factory together for the past 40 years. The candies that were produced in the factory, passive voice, since the buckets moved in were better than ever before. However, Charlie's mood began to change one day, and for the worst. Worse. Mr. Wonka and Charlie were producing a top-secret candy recipe in the inventing room. While they poured a few different ingredients into a small mixer, Charlie turned towards his idol with a worried look on his face. Mr. Wonka, Charlie said nervously, Excuse me, you're a 53-year-old man. You, you're almost an elder, all right? You can shop at the 55 and over menu, you know what I mean? You, you don't say Mr. to anybody. Charlie said nervously, There's something I really need to tell you. What's wrong, Charlie? Mr. Wonka asked with concern. Feel free to tell the truth. I know you can. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, Charlie quietly responded, I don't want you to become too worried, but yesterday as I was combing my hair, a single strand of hair fell out and it was silver. I'm sure you recall a similar si situation that happened to you. Oh, yeah, they did that in the 2005 movie. That's not really how aging happens. You know, just like, uh-oh, I have a silver hair. There's a lot There's a lot that happens when you age. <laughs> like a bunch, including routine colonoscopies. Anyway. <laughs> I, I sure do, Charlie, Mr. Wonka whispered. It's happening all over again. I hope that you won't do what I think you'll do. Sorry, but I'm afraid I must do what you won't want me to do, Charlie told him. We must find a new heir who will replace both of us when the time comes. Why didn't you retire, Wonka? That was the point to the thing you did. Wonka's jaw dropped in disbelief and his face became as pale as fresh snow. Get rid of that. That's just bad. No, Charlie. We can't be at this point already. Really, Mr. Wonka, Charlie told him. It's for the better. We must do this if you want the Wonka Candy Company to be continue con to continue running as it is. Do you understand? You're right, Charlie. He replied. He replied. He replied. He replied while nodding. But why now? He doesn't feel like you've been here for forty years. I know, Charlie said, shedding a single tear. Where is the? Why are you crying? You've been aging at the same rate for 40 years. Did you just forget? <laughs> Did you look down and go, oh, God, I'm wrinkly. What on earth? Okay. The time does fly by fast, but the harsh reality is that we are both getting older. What do you mean we're both getting... He's 84. I doubt he can walk okay. He wakes up in the morning and is in intense and constant pain. He probably can't see very well anymore. He's definitely going deaf, for sure, considering how much singing goes on at the Wonka compound. Ugh. Mr. Wonka was at a complete loss for words. He sighed sadly as he peered into the mixer, watching as the ingredients swirled around and around. Charlie did the same, and another small salty teardrop fell out of his eye into the mixer. 
That tiny teardrop began to mingle with the rest of the ingredients. You got eye germs and some chocolate, dude. That is not cool. And the sadness that Charlie felt would become... A part. You know there are things living in your eye? Like in your eyelashes? That's gross, man. Don't put that in my chocolate. It would become part of a brand new candy recipe. The sadness would become part of a brand new... Ca okay. Something had to be done about this situation. I can't believe it, Mr. Wonka mumbled to himself. We need a new air already. What do we do now? <laughs> The same thing we've always done. We sh fire golden tickets into the stratosphere. It's 2045. We have holograms. There are space wars. Wah. See what I mean by how bizarre this is? It's like the writing isn't fan fiction bad, but it's like there's something about it. That one reflects the source material far too well, which is why the Sonic one was really, really funny. But it's also, like, very direct. It's, it's very plain. It is all of the things that are happening, for the most part, are, like, correct writing. Like, yes, this is a good place to pause and have a moment of introspection. You, you would see this kind of pacing in a real piece of, like, fiction, you know what I mean? But it's about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory 40 years from the 2005 film. It's completely bizarre. That just... I, I can't... With my language, I cannot mark down exactly why that is so weird. But rest assured, it is real weird. <laughs> I love this hobby. <laughs> I get to experience oddities like this. It's very late. It's almost 6 a.m. So, you know, take, 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 take that as you will. Take, 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 take. Anyway, until next time, bye.